Hey guys, it's me, Zach, from Zachy42. So the other day I saw this video of this guy who took these rubber bands on some string and he said he made a supersonic whip. And again, the materials he used were only rubber bands and string. So I tried it out for myself and I was really surprised to find out that it worked. It also makes a good cat toy. Well, I'm trying to record a video, but you guys keep coming up here. The best thing about this project is that it's really easy to make. All you need is 10 rubber bands and one to four feet of string. The purpose of this video is not only to show you guys this really cool project, but also to help explain to you guys how a sonic boom is created. So all you need to do is to double loop five rubber bands and then tie your string onto the end. When you're done, you'll get something that looks a little bit like this. So now that we have a supersonic rubber band whip made, I'd like to have a little fun with it. And then I'd like to go back and explain how to calculate the speed of sound. So yes, I know some of you guys out there want to know this. We will be doing some math today, but not too much. So before we get started with this, I would like to point out some safety precautions with this. So obviously, the end of the string is traveling over the speed of sound, which yes, is way over 750 miles an hour. So to be safe here, I have a glove on just in case it comes back and hit me. And occasionally, not often, it does have the ability to come back and hit your face. So it's really nice if you guys would like to put glasses on of some kind. So to make sure it does not come back and hurt your hand, pinch it just like this. And then you can grab the last part of your rubber band, pull all the way back your arm's length, and let go. Don't you just love that sound? So the downside of recording a video like this for you guys is you can't really hear the sonic boom very well. But that's okay. So, if you think about it, why does the sonic boom happen? I'd like for you guys to imagine a plane that is basically sitting around, not moving at all. Let's pretend that there's a small sound coming from the front of the plane. As you can see, the plane is not moving, so sound moves off in all directions, but also at the same rate. Now I'd like you guys to imagine a plane that's moving, say, 150 miles an hour or so. And as you can see, as it moves forward, the sound waves will start to bunch up at the front of the plane. Now let's pretend there is a plane that is moving faster than the speed of sound, so faster than 767 miles an hour. As you can see, the front of this plane would break the sound barrier. So one thing I want to point out to you guys, besides the fact that the airplane is outside the waves of sound, is this cool bubble-like effect that happens on the outside of the sound waves. Now I can draw just like this to show you guys an arrow. Now when scientists and mathematicians draw this arrow, they can actually use it to predict how fast this airplane is moving, which I think is kind of cool. And don't worry guys, for those of you that are worried, we're not going to get into this math today. Now it's the moment you've all been waiting for, we're gonna get, and we're gonna play with a supersonic rubber band whip. So once again guys, I'd like to explain the safety of this. I have a glove on just in case it comes back and snaps me. I also have glasses on in case it comes back and hits me in the face. And then I have our supersonic rubber band whip. So I have a few things I wanna experiment with today. And actually I'm gonna show you another way that you can also make something supersonic. These are just so fun. Oh, so quick thing, some of you guys probably doubt that this isn't actually moving the speed of sound, but I'm gonna tell you guys right off the bat here, that is not true. This rubber band whip is indeed moving faster than the speed of sound, if you do this right and if you pull it back all the way. The first thing I'm gonna say, you guys will know when it's a sonic boom when you hear it, because seriously guys, it can be really loud. This is also why you should do it in a garage like this, or in your definitely professional laboratory. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to try to see if this can break a hole into this water bottle. The interesting variable here that I'm experimenting with is that I filled this water bottle up with rocks. This is also something really cool that you guys can experiment with and change the variables at home. Three, two, one. Okay, so we've dented our water bottle a little bit here. I'm not sure if you can see this through the camera, but there is literally a dent here. If you look closely here, there's actually a hole in this water bottle. So that took three or four, okay, it actually took about eight or nine tries. But we were able to get a hole in this water bottle, which is pretty awesome. Alright guys, so the next thing I want to try is to see if we can break a hole in this. So this is a really big water container that basically you can get at Home Depot. And by the way, the store managers look really funny at you when you get a jug of water without the water. Three, two, one. Holy cow! So I don't know if you guys can hear that as well as I did, but that made a very loud noise. So we have officially dented our water container. You guys can see there's a little misformation right there. Alright guys, so one thing I wanted to do with you guys is basically to explain to you guys how to calculate the speed of sound on your own. But in order to do that, we're gonna have to go somewhere else. 
Alright guys, the reason we're here is because I want to show you guys another way you can make a supersonic whip. And I'm going to throw out their apologies ahead of time for this audio. See, this is a working bathroom, there's a toilet running, there's windows, and it's really windy outside, so that's where the audio problem comes from. Alright, so here's the math part of this. So in order to calculate the speed of sound, you need to know how warm or cold it is outside. But you actually need this degree in Celsius, not Fahrenheit. So if you're 70 degrees outside, it would be 21.1 Celsius outside. It'd be point like 11111, many ones, but we're just going to round it 21.1. Now we have to multiply 21.1 by 0 0.6. So 21.1 multiplied by 0 0.6 equals 12.6. The next step is to simply take 331.5 and add it to our number 12.6. With this, you get 344.1. This means that the current speed of sound outside, if it was 70 degrees, will be 344.1 meters per second. And 344.1 meters per second actually equals 769 miles an hour. So the speed of sound outside right now, if it was 70 degrees, would be over 769 miles an hour. Meaning that we basically created a speed of 770 miles an hour in our own garage. Which is kind of crazy. Alright guys, so another way to make a supersonic whip is actually with a wet towel. So I have a towel here and I got it wet. And now you just kind of go like this. Again through the camera, it's really hard to hear the sonic boom, but it does make a nice snapping noise. That was actually a pretty good one. Best thing about this is now my arm is really wet. <laughs> Alright guys, we had a lot of fun today. We learned how to make a supersonic rubber band whip. We also learned how to calculate the speed of sound. And I also showed you guys another way that you can make a supersonic whip. And the best part about that one is you don't really need safety glasses. But make sure you guys are still safe. And if you like this video, please consider subscribing because that would really help me and my channel out. I am Zachy42 and I will see you guys next time. Bye guys. Woo! Hey guys, so I uh, came back after getting some materials ready, and my uh, my place is infested with cats. This is our rubber band whip. Yeah, it's now a cat door.